Hello again, and welcome to part 10, if you're following all the parts. <laughs> if not, your first time here, you've come to the wrong part. This will take us through uh, the pages you can see that I'm going to be talking about and showing you. But this way you can stop the pages as well if you want. Like early set, aperture, shutter speed, easily set, sorry. Uh, and so on. So you just stop the page and have a read if you're not sure or I'm not making it clear in the video, taking panorama pictures. Uh, I went out yesterday and today and I took some specially to put on here. And then the playback situation, you can actually edit and playback. I don't do any editing in camera, but you can see here that you can do it, albeit by a limited amount. Now that applies to this lovely new camera, the FZ2000, FC 2500, FZH1. It's got lots of different names. Brilliant camera. Hi, excuse the hood. I've been outside and it's what us Scots call Baltic weather. I'm not, I'm not in Scotland either, but that's how it goes sometimes. And I don't have much hair because I like crew cuts, so I don't have much hair to keep me warm. Anyway, this is all about part 10. And this will be how to confirm the effects of your aperture and your shutter speed. It's called preview mode. And you can see the depth of field and so on and so forth. And then the next part I shall do is easily how you can easily set up the aperture and shutter speed for suitable exposures. And it's called one push AE. Now, there's some pages flitted past before you got to this video. If you go back to them, you can stop them at any stage because it, it's in writing there. And some people prefer it in writing rather than being shown or told about it. Then after that, in sort of part three of part 10, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to take panorama pictures. It's called the panoramic shot mode. Uh, you can shoot it that way, landscape, or that way portrait. And that way portrait is pretty big files but the details are out of this world. Certainly worth looking at. And then I'm going to show you how changing the recording direction and angle of view affects things and also how to do it, the, change the image size of the panorama pictures. So I think that'll do because that'll be about half an hour's video. Yeah, it's about half an hour. I'll try and keep it to that. It doesn't always work out that way. Now this is just a short video of me actually up in the gra graveyard doing some of the shots there. And I've put the pictures here for you to see. Not edited in any way. One was downsized, that was all. Necessary when there's such huge files. Now, this one here was almost a full 360 degrees. I'm going to claim 350 on that one. <laughs> and this one here, this was around 200 degrees. And then portrait mode on this. And it's the same gate, extreme left and extreme right into the stable. So I'm going to claim 350 on this one. And this is the same again, but in landscape mode down on the farm. Brilliant, isn't it? Hello again and welcome to this little uh, talk through on several things. But this first one is the preview mode and it confirms the effect of the aperture and the shutter speeds. Yeah, it works in IA, IA+, P, A, S, M, panorama, scene mode and the little arty one. And it the effects of the aperture and the shutter speed can be checked by using the preview mode. It confirms the effect of aperture, so you can check your depth of field, the effective focus range, and all that sort of stuff before taking a picture by closing the diaphragm blades. And it lets you see at the aperture you set or the shutter speeds. So it can confirm movement by displaying the actual picture that you'll get when you take the shot. So you set a function button. If the camera comes ready with it on FN6, I've left mine at FN6 and I've also done FN4. 
because it's nearer the shutter button. But since then, I've found an even better way, <laughs> as you do. But let's just switch on. Come out of panorama mode and go to shutter priority. There we are. Now, if I press my button halfway, my shutter button, I get my settings there. So the back knob there governs the shutter speeds. You can see what's happening there. All the different settings. Now if I press FN6, see how dark it's gone? That's the aperture isn't set right for this taking a shot there. But I know that now. If I want a dark shot, I get a dark shot. Press it again and you have it's come back up again. <laughs> it's just confirming it. Now we'll press it again and it shares shutter speed. Now if I hold the camera there and move my fingers, you should be able to see they're moving too fast for the camera to focus and make them sharp. So that's what you'd get if you were taking the photo of a racing car, motorbike or a child swinging. You may want that effect. In itself, it's not wrong. But at least it's told you and you can alter it if you want to. If you press menu set and go into the custom menu, that's the blue one with a spanner, FN button set. Yeah, if you want FN to alter any of those buttons, you press on there, set it into recording mode, press on that. Now look at that. And you can see that I've got my FN4 and FN6 set on the, it looks like a shutter and that's what it is. It's letting me know what my settings are. That one's macro, that's slow, wide FN2 for your telly and your zoom slow. There's your FN1, telly and so on and so forth. It's ever so handy. FN5 I have is the quick menu. That's as the camera came. But everything can be confirmed. If you carry on through here, you can see all the different settings. It's up to you what you want to set. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But you can see they're in there. Half press release. I don't like that one. I can't get used to it, so I don't use it. Half press the shutter button and it goes clunk. I you like to half press to confirm my aperture and my shutter settings. Nothing else. Zebra patterns, nothing to do with zebras. It's to do with exposure warnings. Now there, can you see constant preview? If you select that, then you have it all the time on your screen and in the viewfinder, what your settings are going to give you as an end result in your picture. Now this, the same applies to one push AE. If the aperture values and the shutter speeds blink red at you, when the shut, shutter button's pressed halfway, you have to, the camera's saying, you have to alter some of your settings. Now it's completely down to you. I'm just going to half press my shutter button and then turn the back dial there. And you can see, there's all your settings. So if the camera's blinked red at you, alter some settings. There's plenty to choose from. You go until you get to matching. If it's greyed out, the camera doesn't want you to have it. <laughs> because I can lower my ISO. It's up at 800 and I could bring it down to say 80 or 125. And that would then alter all my shutter speed and my aperture settings. So... It's handy to do. It's handy to know about it. Now, taking panoramic shots. 
it's called the panoramic shot mode and if you look on the top there you can actually see it around there now that's you and you can see mine's come up then and it said I'm going to take it with that arrow there you can see that way and that's how I like to take mine You press the shutter button halfway to focus and press it fully and then start moving the camera in a small circle in the direction that you chose for the arrow on the screen. You have to move the camera at a constant speed and if they don't record properly because you've moved too fast or too slow, it will come up and tell you. It will say, Oi Jimmy, slow down or Oi Jimmy, go faster. And you press the shutter button once to start it and then when you finish doing it press it again and that's basically it and i've put in some shots here and a short video of uh, me using it up in the churchyard so you get the general idea of how to handle a camera i sort of got used to it i get it about 75 percent right but usually when you're doing a shot like that you can do it again and again and again and again. Landscape's pretty good for that, unless there's a, something happening. <laughs> the landscape's pretty good for that because it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so just play with it and have a go. It's really quite interesting. And then you can also change the recording directions and angle of view, the size, etc. You go into menu, And then record mode. That's the red camera. I'm going over to that side now. And up one. Record mode. It says the red REC there. And then come back this way by moving the arrows to this side. There you go. Now you're looking for panorama settings. And I'm using the back button. You can also flip through the screen if you want. I don't bother but I use this. You're looking for panorama settings. There, down at the bottom in yellow. So we'll accept that. And there you go. Directions. Yeah. That means that way. If we go for that one. That means that way. And so on. You get the idea. Go up one and you swing it left to right and so on. Now if we come down one, this is your picture size. You've got wide or standard. It means exactly what it says. Standard is not a full 360. Wide you may get a 360. I keep it on wide. Because even if I only get a short one, I'm quite happy to use it because you don't need all them megapixels to put it on to a computer or a phone. And so that's basically it for the panorama side of things. Now when you play back on here, if, you, if you've taken your... Let me just see... If you've taken your panorama, yeah, what you do is you go into playback, which is there. And mine says nothing to record. But it will come up with a start and a stop sign. And that means start the panorama and pause it. Or stop it. Quite easy. Simple to do. The zoom position is always fixed to wide. The focus white balance and exposure are fixed at the optimum values for the first picture. As a result, if the focus of brightness changes substantially during the entire panorama, bear in mind it can take you 30 seconds to turn round, the picture may not be recorded at the suitable focus of brightness. If somebody walks in the shot and stands in the way, the camera will focus on them because you're in a not-to-focus mode. 
When multiple pictures are combined to create a single panorama picture, the subject may appear distorted or the connection points may be noticeable in some cases. I haven't had any of that with this camera. I did with the FZ1000 and I do on my Canons. Doesn't matter what I do, the Canon in the programs that I use, bear in mind it's another program, not Canon. It's not the camera. Can't join it up properly. So at least this seems to do it all. Now, it's not available if a panorama picture may not be able to be created or the picture may not be confirmed or combined properly when recording the following subjects are under recording conditions. Now I'm reading this off the screen. Subjects with a single uniform color or a repetitive pattern such as the sky or a beach, moving subjects, person, pet, car, wave, flowers blowing in the breeze, etc. Subjects where the colour or patterns change in a short time, such as an image appearing on a display, dark places and locations with flickering light sources, such as fluorescent lights or candles. Now you need to get a manual and read that, because you'll never remember it. I certainly don't. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll get on with part 11 when I get part 10 posted. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, or subscribe to me. So There's quite a few people doing that and following me now, which is good, because when I put the new one up, they know it's there. Whether they want to watch it or not is another matter. Have a good day, whatever you're doing. I'm going to go and edit this lot. And I shall have a good day doing that. Thanks for watching. Bye.